every day for as long as I can remember. I do the same thing. I'd be at home or at work, and just to get through the day, I close my eyes and imagine I'm somewhere else. I guess a lot of people do the same. But I really feel like I was there. I dream that I could really do it. Close my eyes and travel to the other side of the planet. Well, that was my dream. And tonight, I'm gonna live it. Go like this. Go like this. Everybody. At home too. Go like this. Just like this. Thumbs down, palms out. Take one hand, put it over the other hand. Lock your fingers together and don't let go. For about a month. Keep your thumbs down. Thumbs down. Watch me. Watch me. Go like this. Everybody in the world has a perfect place. It's a place that you dream about when you're trying to escape from your problems. My perfect place is a beach on an island in the middle of nowhere. But everybody, when they're at work or at school or having problems, they'll close their eyes and picture their perfect place. Everybody try this. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Do it. Close your eyes. I'm not going to steal your wallet. And imagine yourself anywhere you want to be in the world. Really picture yourself there. Really feel it. Now, open your eyes. You're still here. But I really want to do it. Tonight I'm going to try. I'll close my eyes and travel halfway around the world in seconds. I'm going to a little island off the coast of Hawaii. Right? There. And I'm going to take somebody from the audience with me. But not yet. <laughs> Time to get cut. <laughs>
That's our show. Good night, everybody. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Hey, guys, check this out. The coolest thing was doing it outside. The reactions were incredible. Now, Dave has been conducting an extensive test for months to prepare for tonight's challenge, but as you'll see, they don't always go as planned. You've read about the accidents, you've heard about the injuries. Tonight, you will bear witness as he actually tries it live. Coming up, the greatest physical challenge of David Copperfield's career, attempting to stand in the core of a blazing tornado of fire without getting incinerated. Time to an survey. Everybody in the audience is wearing white underwear. Raise your hand. Everybody in the audience is wearing colored underwear. Raise your hand. So everybody that didn't raise their hand. A classic of magic is to make objects change places. Right here, you're way ahead of me. Come on. Everybody. Come over here. Step up here all the way up, face forward. I asked about white underwear. I think you raised your hand. You did. Just so we remember. Good. Your name is? Salinda. Face uh, forward. I asked about colored underwear. I think you raised your hand. Yeah? Don't tell me. Let me guess. No. No happy pants? Pull out the right one. Need your signatures. Jessica, take this pen. Write Jessica right there. J. Essica. <laughs> Dot the I. Nicely done. Celinda, take this pen. Write Celinda. S. Elinda. Nicely done. These are labels. I need to get these labels on their underwear. No, sir, you can't help me. I can do it the hard way or the easy way. It's your choice. Hard or easy. Hard, so dinner first. <laughs> Ladies, go like this. Go like this. Reach behind you and pull out just a little tiny bit. Just enough for the label. Don't give yourself a wedgie. Turn around. Don't worry, Jessica. No one's looking. Look at the screen. Is that your signature? It is. We're going to stick it on there. So you'll never lose them. Turn around, tuck it in. Let's check out the red underwear. Ooh, a beautiful shade of red. It brings out your eyes. Probably because we're pulling too hard. Look at the screen. Is that your uh, signature right there? It's your printed shirt. There you go. We're going to stick it on there. Uh-huh. And stick it on there really good. Cough. I'm just kidding. Turn around and tuck it in. The object is to make Jessica's white underwear disappear. And reappear on Celinda. And make Celinda's red underwear disappear and reappear on Jessica. I'm so happy. It's like the MTV Spring Break special. <laughs> Give me your hands, close your eyes, think happy thoughts. I am. It's done. You are now wearing her red underwear. You are now wearing her white underwear. That's pretty darn cool. But the hard part is to make their underwear go back. It's done. Thank you very much. Ladies, go like this. Don't move. I think we're going to try this. One more time. Yeah.
Open your eyes. Your underwear has disappeared. I'll show you. Take your hands. Reach down into your neighbor's pants. Do it! It's fun! In the White House, they used to do it. Follow the leader! You could be friends so dead. Okay, they're back. But you should have checked. Because now you'll never know. We're going to go all the way to Hawaii. You have to have a crew waiting for you. And we've got a satellite team waiting for us right now. Let's check our satellite feed. Brad, how you doing? Doing fine. We've got to find some people from the audience. At random, I'm throwing the frisbee. Come on down. What's your name? What's your name? What's your name? Andy. You don't look like an Andy. Come over here. Hey, Brett, say hi to Andy. Hey, Andy. Andy, what's your favorite sport? Volleyball. I want you to take this pen, draw a picture of yourself playing volleyball right there. <laughs> Brett, she picked volleyball. Volleyball. Love it. That's not volleyball. That's the Blair Witch Project. <laughs> Give Andy and Brett a big round of applause. Go back to your seat. Good job. All right. That gets the place right over here. Very, very good. I need somebody else to help me out, too. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Hey, what's your name? Give me your hand. Right this way, Jake. Big hand for Jacob. Come on. Step up here, Jacob. All the way up. All the way up. I got a very important job for you, okay? All right? Here's your job. Your job is to turn around, look at the picture, and make sure nobody touches it, all right? Cool. Watch the show, just watch that. Good job. When I was starting out in magic, I couldn't afford beautiful assistants to levitate, so I levitate my relatives. I'm sure what I mean, but I gotta find some relatives. No. Uncle Morty! Uncle Morty, how you doing? Where's Aunt Ida? Aunt Ida and Uncle Morty, stand up, stand up, come with me, follow me. Applause, applause for Uncle Morty and Andy Ida. Woo! Uncle Morty, how you doing? Aunt Ida. Still have that facial hair problem, I see. Have a seat in our sofa, have a seat in our sofa. We took the plastic off just for you. Trusting relatives. Ladies, strap them in. Arms up. Tight. Shuka. Shuka. Peanuts. Share. Put your nuts down. Take your hands off your nuts. That goes for everybody. Tonight we're going to levitate. Just to close your eyes. Close your eyes. It's a night flight. Got a blanket for your comfort. What are you doing under there? <laughs> Remain perfectly still. Keep your eyes closed. Because the next thing that's going to happen, the next thing that you will feel will be yourselves levitating and rising in the air, is the next thing that you will feel.
Good night, Ida. And a big thank you for that very large, very generous $25 bar mitzvah check. Thank you very much. We floated people outside in broad daylight. Oh, Damn it! This is a This is nothing. Want to go again? Coming up, David Copperfield stands in the center of a 2,000 degree tornado of fire. If David gets injured during this challenge, I really think his chances of survival can be very little. The severity of burn that one can get at temperatures this high are enormous. I think this is a good example as to why he shouldn't be doing this. This is a terrible way to die. I'm going to show you something you can try at home. All you need is some water, but you should know that this only works with crystal. That's right, this only works with crystal. Listen. A little less water. Ladies and gentlemen, Crystal, there he is, Crystal. That was really stupid. This is a piece of the moon. Right. It's a moon rock. You see, the moon has an important relationship to water, an amazing relationship. Let me show you what I mean. See, when the moon passes over the Earth and is either rising or setting, we have low tide. Even when we're not watching, the moon affects the tides. When the moon passes over the earth and is directly above it, high tide. Find the true source of wonder, all you have to do is look straight up. Because after the planets, and the moon, and the tides, came life. bizarre memory. I was walking down Amboy Avenue in my hometown and I looked through the window and I saw two people sitting alone in a room and even though I was looking through the window, in my mind, in my imagination, I became part of the story. I call this the voyeur.
<laughs> in a moment, David Copperfield will attempt the greatest physical challenge of his career, surviving in the core of a tornado of fire. some magic in your hands. I need uh, some people with money. Who has money? Who has money? Yeah, Who's got a uh, change? Change on you. Anybody got a coin? You got a coin? Perfect. Give it to the gentleman over there. Who has no money? Who has no money? Lots of people. Okay. We're going to pick out a group and put them over there. We're going to try some magic just using the power of my voice. I'm going to stand over here. I got my little microphone over here. Get a group together over there. Excellent. Uh, who's got a coin? It's a quarter. Okay. okay. Hold on the palm of your hand. That's very, very good. And uh, everybody hold on to her wrist. Hold on to her wrist, everybody. There you go. Exactly good. And I need your finger from your other hand, the pointer finger from your other hand, and hold it on edge. With the tip of your finger. There you go. Exactly. We're going to balance that coin using the power of my voice. It's important that you move extremely slowly and carefully. Slowly lift your finger up. Slowly. Perfect. That was great. We'll try it again. Put your finger on top of the coin very gently, extremely gently. Listen to my voice. Slowly lift your finger up. Slowly, slowly, slowly. Don't move. The coin will fall in slow motion. Watch. Falling in slow motion. Falling in slow motion. It'll be dancing by tomorrow. We've got some blank cards. Cards that are blank on both sides. We also have a piece of charcoal. We're going to take the charcoal and draw a line on the card. And we need someone's hand. Spread out your hand. Yeah, there you go. We're going to put the charcoal on top of their hand. The card goes on top of the charcoal. Put your other hand on top of that. Exactly. Hi. Have we ever met before? No. No. All right. I want you to close your eyes and picture your perfect place. You thinking of it? Yes. Say it out loud. Malibu. Malibu. That is correct. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Close your eyes. Did you say the word Malibu to anybody in the audience before the show? No. Did you say the word Malibu to anybody during the show? No. All right. Fine. Everybody else, put your hands around her hands. Put your hands around her hands. And I want you to all concentrate on the word Malibu. Concentrate on the word Malibu, that piece of charcoal, or write the word Malibu on the bottom of that card. And it's done. Everyone remove your hands. But keep your hands together, darling. Open your eyes. Would you be amazed if it said Malibu on the bottom of that card? Yes. <laughs> so would I. I don't want anybody to see what's written. Just peek between your hands like this. Peek inside. Show the card to the camera. Give her a big round of applause. Nicely done. Meine Dame aus dem Publikum, kann ich mal das Saallicht haben, bitte? Perfect. Vielen Dank. Hallo, wie heißen Sie? Page. Hier ist der Applaus für Page. Page, alles klar? Page, ich zeige Ihnen jetzt was Schönes. Um, I'm going to show you something really cool. This big deck of cards. These cards have symbols that represent the moon. We got the full moon. We got the half moon. We got the crescent moon. We got the blue moon. We got the moon river. We have the moon over Miami. We got the Keith moon. We got my moon. Yeah, yeah. Page, I need your help. I need you to take your finger, touch a card, and keep your finger on it. All right? Anyone you want. You can stick with that one or change your mind. It's your choice. Happy about Take it out real slow. Don't want anybody to see it, especially me. Just take a peek at it yourself and hug it tight like this, both hands. Excellent. Good. Because I'm going to try to read your mind. You need to face me. Face me. 
Komm mal kurz. Ein bisschen mehr, bitte. Komm mal mehr. Okay. That's my job. Stay there, don't move, okay? I'm gonna stand with my back to you. Press up against me. Cheek to cheek. It's very important that I feel the vibrations. So Paige, take your right hand, take your right hand and put it on my leg. Could you press a little harder, Paige? Good. <laughs> Don't let go, whatever you do. I want you to make a mental picture of your card. I'll try to draw a picture of it on this pad, all right? I'll draw a picture of the ocean first. And if you concentrate hard enough, I'll draw a picture of the moon that you're thinking of above the ocean. But first, let's have some mind-reading music. I want to know what you're thinking. There's something you can't hide. Oh, yeah. So good. That's it. Go with it, Paige. There's me, Paige. This way, push me back. This is Bill Clinton and Monica Lewinsky. Those are good vibrations right there. That's not my leg, Paige. But you are welcome anytime. Paige, Paige, the moon you've been thinking of, the moon you've been holding on to all this time, is the full moon. What does this mean in Memphis? Are you serious? And it felt so good dancing with you too. That's the uh, crescent, uh, crescent moon. I'm only off by two thirds. Actually, this is not a picture of the moon. Actually, this is a picture of the sun. Waiting to set on the night of the crescent moon. Everybody, keep your eye on the picture. Give her a big round of applause. Live in New York, wo es gleich mit David Copperfield weitergeht. Ah, hier ist er ja schon. Der Countdown zur größten Herausforderung seines ganzen Lebens. Er wird im Zentrum eines Feuersturms stehen. Kann er das überleben? Gleich sind Sie live dabei. Jetzt brauchen Sie die Karten mit der Stadt Ihrer Träume. Holen Sie sie raus. Sie brauchen alle acht Karten. Ganz oben liegt die Karte mit der Stadt Ihrer Träume. Geben Sie mir Ihre Hand. Wie heißen Sie? Nicole. Einen herzlichen Applaus für Nicole. Bitte setzen Sie sich doch hierher. Nehmen Sie alle Ihre Karten und bilden Sie damit einen großen Fächer. Nehmen Sie jetzt die Traumkarte irgendwo, tun Sie oben, unten, in der Mitte, irgendwo rein. Meine kommt hier hin und Ihre Karte ist, wo immer Sie wollen. Machen Sie das jetzt. Und danach schieben Sie die Karten wieder zu einem Stapel zusammen. Die helle Seite kommt nach oben und jetzt mischen. Mischen, so viel Sie wollen. Und wenn Sie genug gemischt haben, machen Sie einen Stapel. Legen Sie ihn auf Ihre Handfläche mit der hellen Seite nach oben. Ihre Beine bilden jetzt einen Tisch. Also heben Sie die Knie an, damit Ihre Oberschenkel waagerecht sind, eine Parallele zum Boden bilden. Passen Sie auf, dass Sie keine Falten werfen und dass sich Ihre Unterwäsche nicht abzeichnet. Bilden Sie zwei Stapel, links und rechts. Legen Sie sie übereinander und merken Sie sich, wo die Karte mit der Stadt Ihrer Träume ist. Und danach nehmen Sie den Stapel mit dem Städtenamen mit der hellen Seite nach oben. 
Mischen Sie wieder die Karten. Solange Sie wollen, mischen, mischen, mischen. Wenn die Karten gut gemischt sind, bilden Sie einen Stapel. Legen Sie die Karten mit der hellen Seite nach oben auf Ihre Handfläche. Nehmen Sie den anderen Stapel und legen Sie ihn auf den Stapel in Ihrer Hand. Okay. Und jetzt wieder zwei Stapel, links und rechts. Aufeinander legen und nicht vergessen, in welchem Stapel die Karte mit dem Städtenamen ist. Aber dieses Mal nehmen Sie den Stapel, in dem die Karte mit der Stadt Ihrer Träume nicht drin ist. Den Stapel ohne Städtenamen. Drehen Sie den Stapel um, die dunkle Seite nach oben und jetzt wieder mischen. Warum, weiß ich auch nicht. Machen Sie es einfach. Genug gemischt. Die dunkle Seite bleibt oben und dieser Stapel kommt auf den anderen drauf. Nehmen Sie das Ganze in die Hand und legen Sie es auf Ihre Handfläche, so wie ich es Ihnen jetzt vormache. Raten Sie mal, was jetzt kommt. Es gibt wieder zwei Stapel. Okay, links und rechts. Dadurch dauert diese Show ewig lang. Überlegen Sie, wo der Städtename liegt und nehmen Sie dann den anderen Stapel. Sie nehmen den Stapel ohne Städtenamen und mischen einfach weiter. Das reicht schon. Dieser Stapel kommt auf den anderen. Sie halten das Ganze fest und jetzt aufgepasst. Sie drehen den Stapel um und legen ihn auf Ihre Handfläche. Von jetzt ab ist es wichtig, dass der Stapel gerade gehalten und nicht gedreht wird. Schön gerade halten. Und das Ganze kommt jetzt unter Ihren Po. Unter welche Hälfte entscheiden Sie? Nicht in die Mitte. Und bitte nur den eigenen Hintern. Nochmal mit der Hand kontrollieren. Und jetzt kontrollieren. Und jetzt fassen Sie die Karten nicht mehr an. Sie bleiben da, wo Sie sind. Niemand fasst seine Karten an, außer Nicole. Nicole, holen Sie jetzt Ihre Karten. Nehmen Sie die Karten und halten Sie sie fest. Haben Sie auch alle? Sind Sie sicher? Soll ich nachschauen? Ich will ja nur helfen. Nicole, für den Fall, dass ich Ihnen in die Karten gesehen habe, sollten Sie doch einmal mischen. Ich schaue nicht hin, mischen Sie ruhig gründlich durch und wenn Sie fertig sind, fächern Sie die Karten auf. Machen Sie einen richtig schönen Fächer draus, schön unten halten, damit ich nicht runter sehen kann. Und dann drehen Sie sich zu mir her, wie Sie mir genau gegenüber sitzen. Ich finde nun durch Berührung Ihre Karte heraus, nur durch Berührung. Ich nehme eine Karte heraus, eine einzige. Wie heißt die Stadt Ihrer Träume? Lake Tahoe. Ein kräftiger Applaus für Nicole. Thank you, ich brauche jetzt noch jemanden. Dazu werfe ich jetzt diesen Ball ins Publikum. Und wer hat ihn gefangen? Guten Tag. Hey, wie heißen Sie? Brooke, hierher kommen. Kommen Sie zu mir. Haben Sie die Karten? Und den Ball? Geben Sie mir die Karten und den Ball, bitte. Und kommen Sie mit. Und jetzt hätte ich gerne einen donnernden Applaus für Brooke. Nehmen Sie bitte Platz. Ich teile die Karten in zwei Stapel. Sie sind noch warm. Brooke, das sind zu viele. Zeigen Sie auf einen Stapel. Strecken Sie den Finger heraus. Ich werde auch nicht dran ziehen. Sie finden heraus, wo die Traumkarte ist, nicht ich. Berühren Sie die Rückseite irgendeiner Karte und bleiben Sie mit dem Finger auf der Karte. Wollen Sie diese oder irgendeine andere? Die hier? Okay. Wie heißt die Stadt Ihrer Träume? Paris. Mal sehen, ob das geklappt hat. Zweimal hat es geklappt, jetzt die anderen 10.000. Am Anfang haben Sie die Traumkarte in den Stapel gesteckt. Dann haben Sie die Karten gemischt. Gemischt, 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 gemischt. Jeder hat seinen Stapel und ich finde jetzt die Traumkarte in Ihren Händen heraus. Wenn ich es schaffe, bitte ich Sie nur um eins. Stehen Sie auf. Wenn ich den Namen der Stadt herausfinde, was machen Sie dann? Genau, das ist ganz wichtig. Los geht's. Holen Sie die Karten wieder her. Aber halten Sie immer waagerecht, immer parallel zum Boden und legen Sie die Karten so auf Ihre Handfläche. 
In Brusthöhe. Und schauen Sie mich an. Wir verlassen uns ganz auf den Tastsinn. Denn wenn Sie auf die Karten schauen, sehen Sie vielleicht den Namen der Stadt und dann verändert sich Ihr Gesichtsausdruck. Und dann weiß ich's. Also nur Gefühl. Schauen Sie mich an. Nehmen Sie die oberste Karte vom Stapel und fühlen Sie sie. Fühlt sich gut an, oder? Aber da steht die Stadt nicht drauf. Also, weg damit. Nehmen Sie die nächste Karte in die andere Hand und fühlen Sie sie. Wieder nicht die richtige. Nehmen Sie die nächste Karte in die Hand und halten Sie sie ganz fest. Die anderen Karten legen Sie weg. Sie werden es nicht glauben. Auf der Karte in Ihrer Hand steht der Name der Stadt Ihrer Träume. Schauen Sie mal rein. Hochhalten! Stehen Sie auf! Sagen Sie Hey! Sagen Sie Halleluja! Und das ist Ihr ganz persönlicher Applaus. Als wir andere Menschen nach ihrem Traum about their perfect place, just like me, many of them said an island to the beach. Some of the letters are very emotional. This is one that we found particularly moving. It's from a gentleman named Russell Brown. Dear Mr. Copperfield, I'm writing since you ask people where they want to go. And I want to ask for my son Michael. I made some bad mistakes when Mike was a boy. I was never home. Then I left. Mike was five. By the time I came back, it was too late to make things right. I heard he lost his mom a few years ago. I guess I'm all he has, even though we hardly know each other. When I left, I joined the army and got stationed in Hawaii for two months. It was paradise. I wish Mike could see it too and find some peace in this world. I don't know if he loves me or hates me, but if you could send my boy to Hawaii, please tell him it was his father who wished this for him. Sincerely, Russell Brown. And Michael Brown is here in our audience tonight. Please help me welcome him. Welcome to show business. How you doing? All right. Welcome, welcome. I've got a present for you. I want you to keep this letter as kind of a souvenir of tonight's festivities. When was the last time you spoke to your dad? About two years. Two years ago. Well, we just spoke to him, and he did have one request. And that is, if we get to Hawaii, and I hope that we do, that I take a picture of you to send to him. Is that cool? All right. Good. Let's see how they're doing in Hawaii right now. There it is, our little island right off the coast of Hawaii. Brett, how you doing? Doing fine. Come on down and examine the sand. There are no trap doors in Hawaii. Bring the bag forward. Move the bag forward, guys. And spread it out. And then spread it out. The weather looks beautiful, but the rain's been coming and going all morning. I hope that doesn't cause us any problems. There's going to be a lot of critical people, cynics, who are going to say, this can't be real, don't insult my intelligence. Well, this is not about intelligence, it's illusion. And we're going to go with some proof. I need you to take off your shoes and stand over there, if you would. I need to find some people at random. I'm going to find them by throwing this steel ball into the audience. Whoever it cracks in the head... It's quite light. We're going to throw it twice, so you know it's random. There's the first throw. Catch it. Pick it up. Close your eyes and throw it anywhere you want. That's right. All right, sir, stand up. What's your initials? T.S. T.S. I want you to point to two people of your choice. Have them go that way, you go that way. Okay, do that right now. Brett, say hi to T.S. Hey, T.S. I did that so you're sure that Brett's really there right now listening to us, and that's important right there in Hawaii. T.S., I need your help. Take this pen. Write T.S., your initials, right there on my arm. T.S., you can do it. Slowly, slowly. T, that's good. S. Nicely done. You went to art school. Come with me. Right this way. We're going to take some pictures here. Right this way. Jacob, take this pen. Write a big J right there. You did a great job, by the way. Yeah. That's a J, all right. That's a good J. <laughs> Stand right here, J Jacob. That's good. Everybody wave high, wave high. I'm going to take a picture of you. Excellent. Nicely done. What's your name? 
Amber, take this pen. Right, Amber, right across the bottom of this picture. Amber, right there. We've all seen movies like Star Wars and Jurassic Park, where they put people into fake backgrounds. But we're not doing that. We have one camera, one continuous shot on that beach in Hawaii. And if we're lucky, both Mike and I will be right there with our feet in the sand, our feet in the water, so that you know that we're really there right now. We're going to make this difficult. We're going to stand on this thin steel platform. So you can see underneath it at all times. And we've got a mirror so you can see from behind. I stole this mirror from the 7-Eleven. Put it around the other side. Come with me. Watch your step. There's some sharp edges and you got some bare feet there. All the way up. Take your right hand and hold on right there. Because we're going to do this out over the heads of the audience. I'm the king of the world! The only thing holding us up is a crane arm that's literally two inches thick. We've got people beneath us, people on the sides of us, people behind us. There's a mirror so you can see from behind, so you know that nothing can enter or leave this space without being seen. Let's check out our proof. Remember these people were selected at random by throwing a ball to the audience. We've got Amber's signature, we've got Jacob and the J. We've got Andy's volleyball game. Pick out something in that picture that you can recognize when you see it again. That goes in your pocket. Keep it safe. Remember, we threw a ball in the audience a number of times until you were satisfied. The gentleman stood up and wrote his initials on my arm. B.S. All right, T.S., I know. Just checking, just checking. Remember what that looks like? The reason we took the Polaroid and my new tattoo. It's so when you see us on that beach in Hawaii, you know that we're really there right now. This is no camera trick or computer effect. In fact, come to any show on my tour and you'll see this live with different people every night. And tonight is your night. We got to take that picture for your dad. Close your eyes and imagine your perfect place. Give it to that guy over there. 